In this video, we're going to build on some of the ideas that we've covered in previous videos on Thevenin's and Norton's theorems, specifically the idea of attaching a load to our circuit. We've looked at several examples where we add a load resistor to our equivalent circuits and we calculate the power in that load resistor. But in this video, we're going to look at the idea of maximum power transfer. And the idea being that for maximum power transfer, the load resistance should be equal to the resistance of the source. And that's going to allow for maximum power to be transferred to the load. So an example might be uh, a hi-fi or an amplifier um, powering a speaker. Now, in this case, the speaker would be the load and the amplifier would be the source. And so it's important when you're connecting speakers to an amplifier that the resistances or the impedances match one another. So we're going to put that into practice in a simple example here. I've got a, a simple Thevenin equivalent circuit there with a Thevenin voltage on the left-hand side and a Thevenin resistance. And let's give these some values. Let's say that I've calculated my Thevenin voltage to be 4.5 volts. So I'll mark that on there. And let's say that I've calculated the Thevenin resistance to be a resistance of 32 0.8 ohms. So there's my Thevenin equivalent circuit there. And just like in previous examples, we'll say that we've attached a load to this circuit. So I'm going to mark that on as RL, the load resistor. And we'll say that because we want maximum power transfer, the load resistor is going to match the Thevenin resistor. And so the load resistor in this case is also going to be 32.8 ohms. And so what we're going to do, like in previous examples, we're going to try and calculate the power in this load resistor. So I'm calling that PL, the power in the load resistor there. And what we can do is we can calculate this power by using our formula for power. P equals I times V. Now, in this case, it's the power in the load resistor, so PL, equals I times V. And what I can do is I can change this formula slightly by thinking about Ohm's law, because I know that I equals V over R, Ohm's law. So, substituting in for I here, I can replace I with V over R. And so that changes my formula from I times V to V over R times V. And I can simplify that formula to V squared over R. So we have a new formula here for the power in this load resistor. So let's work that out because we have um, a voltage here of 4.5 volts. Now, what I have to remember is that voltage, just like when we looked at the potential divider rule, that voltage there is going to be split because some of that voltage, uh, the Thevenin voltage, 4.5 volts, is going to be across the Thevenin resistor. And some of that voltage is going to be across the load resistor. Now, when we looked at Kirchhoff's voltage law and the, the voltage divider rule, we would calculate how much of that 4.5 volts is across this resistor and how much is across this resistor. But we don't have to do that in this case because we know that both resistors are identical and so they're both going to get half of the voltage. So when we're looking at our formula for PL, the power in the load resistor, we have to say that that voltage is half of 4.5 volts, which in this case is 2.25. So, when I'm expressing that in the formula here, I'll say that that's 2.25 squared, because I'm only interested in the power in this load resistor here. So, I'm only interested in the voltage across that resistor there. So, 2.25 squared over its resistance, which in this case is 32.8. So, 2.25 squared over 32.8. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 0.154, or we can multiply that by a factor of 1,000. I get 154.34 milliwatts. Let's look at one more example 
this time for a Norton equivalent circuit. So let's say that I've already calculated my Norton equivalent circuit, and here it is. I've calculated a Norton current of 24 milliamps, and I've calculated a Norton resistance of 46 ohms. And like we had before, it's an open circuit. Those terminals there are not connected to anything. So I'm going to connect a load to this circuit, and we're going to call it RL, just like we did before. But again, because we want maximum power transfer, then this this resistor RL is also going to have to have the same resistance of 46 ohms. So in this case, what we're going to do is calculate the power in this resistance once again. And again, we're going to use the formula for power, P equals I times V. But this time, we're going to use Ohm's law again to substitute in for V, because we know that V equals I times R. So what I can do is I can replace that uh, V in the formula with I times R, which gives me P equals I times I times R. And I can simplify that to P equals I squared R. So let's put some values in. But before we do that, we have to return to this current I, I N, the Norton current, 24 milliamps. Because like we've looked at in previous examples, that 24 milliamps is going to split. And some of that 24 milliamps is going to go through our Norton resistance. And some of that 24 milliamps is going to go through our load resistance. And remember, we're only calculating the power in the load. But looking at this circuit, we can see that because we want maximum power transfer, our resistances match. The Norton resistance and the load resistance are both identical. And so this split of current is going to be an even split. If we have 24 milliamps being supplied, I know that 12 milliamps is going to go through the Norton resistance and, and 12 milliamps is going to go through the load resistance. So when I'm calculating my current here for the power in the load resistor, and remember we're only calculating PL, the power in the load, we can say that I squared is actually going to be 12 milliamps squared. Now we have to express that as an SI unit in amps, so I'll say that that is 12 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. Multiplied by R, which in this case is 46 ohms. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 6.624 times 10 to the minus 3. And it's a power, so it's measured in watts. Or I could better express this as 6.624 milliwatts. So I hope you found this video useful on the concept of maximum power transfer and showing the idea that for maximum power transfer to occur in the load resistor, the load resistor needs to match either the Thevenin resistor or the Norton resistor in this case. And you can try this yourself. If you substitute the value of the load resistor for any other value, the actual power that you'll calculate dissipated in the load resistor will always be less. If you want the maximum amount of power transferred to the load, it has to match the resistance of the source.